Hello and welcome to the Right Click Say podcast. I'm your host, Calcio, joined as always by my fellow host, Jimmy T. In today's episode, we've got a big announcement coming out of the Doodleverse about Doodles 2 and some huge changes that will be coming to everything Doodles. Before we do jump in, though, I wanted to cast you back to May of 2022 when a certain Evan Keast joined us in the studio to chat about the future of Doodles. Uh, so I'm just going to run a little clip now, which will show you a bit more about what he was thinking as far back as May. Doodles can exist, you know, whether Ethereum goes on or not, right? Like right now we do have our original 10,000 collection on the Ethereum blockchain because that's where we think the best NFT products can be created. Um, but that's not to say like we won't build on Flow or we won't build on another chain, right? Like we want to yep. take our brand into the most current, the most user-friendly uh, blockchains or platforms or marketplaces. Um, yeah, we really want to stay nimble and, and like chain agnostic. Yeah. At the end of the day, we just want to create really cool products and like creating NFT or web three products right now is awesome for communities and for fans and for, you know, all the things that NFTs can unlock. So, um, that's not to say that like in the future, I don't know, maybe we'll go back to like, only dealing in in physical <laughs> in the physical space and like doodles <laughs> will just become you know a physical brand but um yeah. i don't think it's gonna go that way but you know i don't know <laughs> um i i think we can kind of hop in and out of the metaverse you know play around yeah. multiple blockchains and experiences and 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 really just focus on the brand at the end of the day and our our fans so yeah Again, just before we do jump into the episode, I wanted to say a huge thank you to our long-term sponsor, Moniverse, who make these episodes possible. I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about what they do. Moniverse is an art-based project that uses the power of NFTs to hone in on culture and bring it to the forefront. Their aim is to connect communities from across the globe via the most iconic monuments and champion artists and the legacy they create. Moniverse gives holders a unique experience in which they can travel back in time to see what man's greatest creations look like upon conception via an immersive and educational experience that displays history, art and culture with guided tours via their AI powered guides. The first drop successfully launched on the 11th of November and featured the stunning Archer piece in Milan, Italy. Following episodes will continue to expand the Moniverse and allow holders access to in real life events and further growing out the understanding of the incredible world we live in. Links to find out more will be provided in the description below. So yeah, right click save. We had the alpha, what was it? Did you say Mark? Was it May, March? May. Last year. So yeah, Evan, we had on the episode, animated as his doodle, uh, dropped some alpha about flow. Um, so that, I was kind of surprised that people, I mean, obviously we haven't gone through the details of what the announcement is on this episode yet, but one of the things we're going to talk about is uh, Doodles 2 and, it be, and a big uh, integration with flow. Um, but yeah, he, he told us, if you listen to the right click save podcast, you've known this information for a long time. I think it's quite funny because it's not the first time we've accidentally been told something on an episode and then yeah. just gone, yeah, it's really cool. Thought everyone knew and then not said anything. Um, yeah. Well, but yeah, as it's, it's Evan said himself, it's because we asked the good questions. Yeah, that's a good question. Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. That is, a, that is such a good question. Ooh, another really good question. You guys are good interviewers. Yeah, so I wanted to jump straight in really with the letter to the Doodles community from the Doodles. Um, and it reads as follows. A new year means new opportunities and new adventures. In 2023, we're opening the gates so Doodles can live everywhere. Following last year's duplicator, airdrop and Genesis box sale, we're ready for beta entry and for the first example of utility within the Doodles 2 product experience. Uh, one that will ultimately allow you to create your own Doodle built both by you and for you. At their core, doodles are designed to be digital identities, expressions of ourselves, or rather how we see ourselves as we travel the internet, the blockchain, and of course, daily life too. We imagine bringing our doodles with us to all of our important places, both online and in the physical world. Doodles don't have limits, only possibilities. Oh, it's exciting, isn't it? It's like a it's like a teaser first paragraph. I like it. It kind of outlines what they want to do. First things I want to pick up on that is I did not own my doodle when they did the duplicator drop, so I didn't get a duplicator. Am I going to experience insane FOMO? I don't yeah. know. I like I said, I held so. on to one of mine because yeah. at the time I had a couple of doodles and I thought I only need one because it's gonna be one doodle that I focus on. And I think that that paragraph to me says I made the right choice because ultimately yeah. um I'm not going to try and make four or five identities i'm good with one um yeah. it's interesting to see that they are trying to find a way to make that 
your original Genesis Doodle stay relevant still? Because one of the yeah. fears people had was that you'd kind of just be, ah, well, you know, see you later, Genesis Collection. But it's nice to see that they are still important. Yeah, and I think you're talking about digital identity and actually looking for specific traits in the NFT that you have as your pro- profile picture. Like, it was so important to me when we were looking at profile pictures that I got a happy dude. Like, I remember, yep. like, we were looking at them for ages and, like, you were suggesting a few other ones. And the one that I had had this sort of big smile on his face. And I kind of see myself as generally quite a happy go lucky kind of guy. And I wanted one that was, like, had this big smile and it was also quite funny that he had the bag on because all these nft events i've always got a massive bag bag. yeah (laughs) Uh, let's do a quick refresh on what the doodles 2 collectible ecosystem is it all starts by personalizing your look with attributes like body hair style and emotion from there you'll be able to customize your doodle with wearables i.e apparel accessories gadgets and more Uh, Once your perfect look is set, your new dynamic NFT identity will now be ready to share across social media, in real life experiences, and many other integrations we have planned. Everyone will be able to buy, sell, and trade their wearable NFTs. You could expect new wearable collections to be released throughout marquee drops. Some featuring inline products and others would be brand collaborations with some incredibly exciting partners, musicians, and creators. This is really where Pharrell's going to come into his own. I think like so far up to this point, it's been very much like what kind of like is Pharrell doing for the brand? And I'm sure that he's probably got some good connections which help with some of the end real life events and things like that. But this is really where he's going to pay for himself, I think. And I think we're going to just see some like nonstop massive announcements, massive integrations, huge brands. Because what big brand doesn't want to speak to Pharrell? He's, he opens every door for doodles. I think it's really interesting as well because I'm going to make an abstract comparison, but I think it makes sense, which was Fortnite. Yeah. And the reason I make Fortnite as a comparison is because originally the game first came out, it was popular, but they yeah. couldn't get big brand deals, right? They, sure. they worked, they made like a fake John Wick skin, right? So it was a guy that looked very much like John Wick. It was pretty much the same, <laughs> but they couldn't call him John Wick because they just yeah. couldn't get the partnership because it's too much. They called him Keanu Wick. Not far off. So they brought in... <laughs> A series of new more talented partnerships and now yeah. if you look at them five six years on they are mate who haven't had star wars marvel disney any anime mm-hmm. name anything travis scott yeah. name them they've had them it just took them time to build up to it and this stylization of build from doodles reminds me of that which is okay we need to start plotting yeah bringing a big name <laughs> that makes sense for Earl williams and then look at a five-year plan. Okay, what do we need? We want wearables, we want cosmetics, because cosmetic market works and has done Big. for yeah. fucking years. So you only need and to look at how much a CSGO knife skin is. Well. I think Doodles, Doodles be the one to properly prove it, I think, out of all the big chip, um, big blue chip kind of, and uh, yeah, out of all the big blue chip NFT projects. It's, it's worth prefacing, though, that they've not all gone after that model, though. So like Bored End not have not all. tried to do this, right? So No, and what I was going to say, more like it lives on Twitter at the moment with like yes. people, like smaller collections building bots that people could do on their website that people allows them to customize the dude. Or like I've done it so many times where like I make a custom kind of, um, like, you know, the, yeah. the love hands that I did for yeah. the, my doodle. Um, everyone ended up with those same kind of love hands for, for all of their doodles because it was a cool little look and it was something that people wanted to share so i think people are just going to get excited about that and have a lot of fun customizing their doodle and even for me like i love my doodle but i'm not a huge fan of the green hoodie and the bag and i'm quite looking forward to um sort of being able to change it up a bit this launch is the start of a transcendent new journey for doodles as we develop the doodles franchise and create experiences across music animation animation key this guy's put a really good proposal in about animation as well. You should probably check out when it goes back live. Uh, consumer products, live events, and more. We need an onboarding experience to our collectible ecosystem that is accessible, easy, and fun. And that's why Flow is a perfect partner. Doodles 2 is built to deliver daily utility to our community today. And thanks to Flow's non-existent gas fees, Doodles holders can enjoy endless customization to create their own uniquely personalized character. And as we look to the future... Flow's familiar onboarding process and experience will help welcome newcomers to Doodles and ultimately Web3. All Doodles holders will have the opportunity to be a part of our expanding universe through multiple interconnected environments. Wherever you go, your Doodle will be with you, side by side with official Doodle character story and lore. Nice. I think the only problem I've got with Flow is that it sounds like a sanitary product. Yeah, I haven't thought about it like that, but now I do just have tampon on the brain. Um <laughs> But then I, yeah. oh, I don't know if it does though, because it's like Tampax. It's just like straight to the point, you know. Like, oh, I don't flow. know. If, flow's kind of encouraging 
Uh, I don't know. As I said, I think perhaps <laughs> let's 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 not go too deep into whether or not we believe flow is a reasonable name for a tampon. <laughs> but key things for me, there's three when I talk about it, yeah. is the fact that they focus in on story and lore. So yeah. we've seen small snippets of, but we've not seen any character development. We ha- Not that they've said they would. Mm-hmm. We've not really seen that approach for it, you know? Yeah. Just from us. Cool. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> so that, that's really interesting. Second thing is just how important animation continually is for their products. Yes. Um, obviously, no secret that we're big fans of Alfie. Be on the podcast September 1 again soon mm-hmm. to chat a bit more about this experience. We kind of already chatted to him about coming back on when it was announced. Yeah. So it'd be awesome to get back on. And um, and Huh? The fact that they just bought Golden Wolf, you know, they just yeah, bought a huge. huge animation studio. And I'm really looking huge. forward to actually seeing how the relationship between them with Alfie is going to work and how much... I feel like they've just given Alfie this fucking huge machine gun of, of content to yeah. him, let him rip on the uh, on yeah. the, uh, on the the NFT space. And, and the third thing actually as well is how... Going? Put me slippers on, mate. <laughs> the third thing is that they continually focus on not just saying they want to do one thing which obviously yeah. every project has always said. But then if you look at what those things are, they're really important. Music makes sense. Cool. Yeah. They've always done. They've always had a musician at every event they've done. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously Pharrell makes sense. So that's easy yeah. for them to sustain. Cool. Animation. No secret. They love animation. Just bought Golden Wolf. Makes sense. Again, also means to caveat, I'm not saying that anyone's told us this. It's not an accidental slip like Flow was or whatever, but makes sense that in theory they'd be looking at and when they talk about lore and characters, that makes me think TV show of some variety somewhere down the line. No idea what, but yeah, makes me think about it. Can't wait to see it. Why'd you buy an animation studio? Why'd you talk about story, lore, and character development? And two plus two is four. And uh, products, right? Which ultimately is again looking at what do people want? Because again, yeah. they've done hoodies, they've done t-shirts. It's fine. Doodles branding is well known for being cutesy and clean. Um, mm-hmm. Very easily could be plushies. So. Yeah. It is building more than just an NFT project, but also accepting the fact that they do need to still be relevant to Web3. Um, and yeah. that's why they've started to give a flow. That's and flow just opens it. I mean, think about the mass market appeal of flow is what yeah. Insta- the Instagram NFTs are built on. Yeah. The, one of the most well known NFT projects was it Top Shots was, was on flow. Maybe Top Shots. Yep. Yeah. You know, people know flow. They're not like the biggest chain, but the fact it's gasless, it's huge, huge less barrier to entry. And like NFT projects can market and build their products for the the small degen market that we have here at the moment and cater for the flippers or you can look for mass market appeal and really that is where the nft space needs to end up if it's going to be if it's going to be successful it's more as well that we've got to be surely as an as as a web3 ecosystem in complete acceptance that the traditional nft project approach is dead okay and that realistically it just doesn't work we've had these big onboarding potentials coinbase being one we've highlighted in recent weeks which was supposed to bring a billion billion people in um reddit is supposed to have six million nft users i know that's just a piss take number and that they gave them for free but my point is it's not worked it's worked for a core of people who were interested but realistically yeah. you're so masses, negative about the space the i'm honest I, i'm on it i'm just realistic it, i'm just being super realistic yeah. and so People don't want to pay fucking the stupid gas fees. We paid some. We paid two hundred dollars on Wolf gas. Sometimes I yeah. pay like a grand for gas. That's just yeah. fucking mental. Some people don't want to do that. Yeah. And so the bottom line is, whether you like it or not, whether you like flow or not, blah 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 blah. To get normal people to well, be interested, Instagram NFTs can't. are banging at the moment. Anyone who drops yeah. an NFT on Instagram, it just sells out, and it's not like. And that's why crazy, there's a right click save project coming out next week. Yeah, we love flow. <laughs> but the same thing I've said this for ages. It's like I don't, I don't ever think the NFT market needs to be hitting crazy valuations on projects for it to be successful yeah. because that's stupid. The only way the NFT market is going to have mass appeal is when NFTs Reasonable are like ten dollars, because otherwise, not who's going to be buying them? Like, do you know what I mean? Mate, people don't idiots. have. Like the mass market does not have thousands of dollars to spend on art or profile pictures or gaming. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what it's it more a is? much smaller amount of money. I think it needs to be the way that other ecosystems of e-commerce exist. Yeah. Right. Which are that the cheap shit doesn't have to be shit. Right. Yeah. So you look at a traditional collectibles. Funko Pops can be a great example. Some Funko Pops are worth five pounds or ten pounds, and they yeah. are cheap, and they are still something you can enjoy. It is not just qualified as shit because it's cheap which is what nfts have always been if it's cheap it's no good we don't want it uh man yeah. you should, because normally you spend a lot more money right than ten dollars on it's normally yeah. fucking five hundred dollars whatever and then it's gone down to 50p yeah. traditional collectibles don't work like that you can buy a lego yeah. set for a fiver 10 quid and really enjoy it and have a great time building it and it's totally okay if that's what mm-hmm. you can afford it doesn't yeah. mean that you have it doesn't mean you have a worse experience than someone who spends 
800 pounds on a UCS Millennium Falcon. They've ever played a film. You get my point. Yeah. That's the difference. So what you're saying is 100% correct, which is that ultimately the NFT market needs to shift to a point where it's okay to not be able to afford a doodle, board ape, mutant ape, burb, whatever you want. You don't have to be able to buy those to be involved. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's and change. not to be and shat on by everyone else because you've only got yeah. a really cheap NFT. Like, and yeah, yeah, and, and that is what the market that I'm, I'm looking forward to. And it sounds weird because we came into this market originally, like, and it was great making loads of money. I've, however, you know, I flipped some yeah. NFTs this week. The market's back, baby. I flipped. Well, I, flipped I bought just one sat, for like 150 dollars. I, I sold it for like 400. I was like, yeah, thanks I'm for the back. cool, mate. Thanks for the call, mate. No stress. <laughs> well, we good. did actually try and get you on that one, and it was, was that the one which went work, to? Yeah, it didn't work on your phone, did it? It just no, it didn't work on anything. Click, it didn't let you click. Do you know what it was? It's because they went, oh, guys, got too much money anyway. Let's leave it for someone yeah, else. Yeah, that was the monsters one. Although I sold it at um at not uh, 0.2 and it's like at like 0.35, 0.4 now. But I'm not oh. going to get salty about it. I'm taking get my tiny violin out for you, dickhead. <laughs> uh, we will also That's, be... Con- I was going to say, that is our mint that we're doing on Flow. <laughs> it's a series of tiny violins for they the, just get uh, bigger for the and old bigger. school DJs. <laughs> <laughs> As the problem becomes worse, it starts with like, yeah, I only yeah. made a million dollars on oh, this. Oh, that'll be it, yeah. The, the more money you lose selling the NFT, the bigger the violin gets. Oh, no, or it should be the smaller, I guess. <laughs> no, I think, the, anyway, I don't know. We need to have a little think about the <laughs> violins. But we will also be continuing to invest in our ecosystem on Ethereum. The original collection of doodles, space doodles, the duplicator, the doodle bank, and other unannounced experiences are core elements of our roadmap. Things like expanding licensing opportunities in the highest tier of access within the Doodles community will always live with the original Doodles community and collection. The future is multi-chain. Wherever you are, Doodles will meet you there. That's big, I think, because again, yeah. we're not just being thrown to the wayside as original collectors. They've made it really clear, really, really explicit paragraph. We're not bad underneath. All of it's still relevant. And more importantly, the original collection is still top tier. I think it's important because you know how this market loves to jump on any little tiny crumb yep. of anything and blow it up into this absolute mountain of FUD. And I think it's yep. important that they really highlight that the Ethereum collection is A, crucially important to everything they're going to be going forwards. And it just needs to, you need to, to maintain the positivity from the, the key community that has got them here in the first place. They can't sign for rail if it wasn't for the fact that the community came in and spent a lot of money buying doodles. So they'd need to look after to look after the OGs. And I think, oh, although, of course, they're going to get a lot of grief for, all, for anything they say in this kind of announcement, I think I'm happy. I know that you're happy with, with, with everything they're saying. I know you're shaking your head now. Maybe you're not. I, oh, I am. No, I'm, 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 I'm totally in agreement, yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's good that they made a point on this, and it is important. Yeah, I, 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 so so the, the general sentiment across social media, if it isn't positive, I don't get it. And the reason I say that is because if this read as, fuck the original collection, sorry, fuck, get rid of it, don't care, and it, and that was the sentiment that came through, then let's be angry, pitch what's blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They made it really clear that it's still going to be an intrinsic part of what they do. But they're mm-hmm. just literally giving you, read between the lines, uh, a very, very self-aware acknowledgement of the fact that in this bubble, everyone loses. Yeah. That being ambitious and attempting to build out into the masses is literally what they've said they want to do from the start. Yeah. So when you bought a product and you spent tens of thousands of dollars on it, this is what you signed up for. This was their mission statement to yeah. bring doodles to the world. You, again, in the episode with it, Evan, uh, flash it up if you want, if you probably won't. But if you do, in it, he makes it so clear over and over again. We want <clears throat> lots of people to be part of doodles, millions of people, part of what they do for a long time. This is the way you do it, in their opinion. And mm-hmm. that's where you've trusted your money. Yeah. If you've chosen to do that and you aren't happy with this, I don't really know what you thought you were signing up for and or what you thought you were going to get. So that's where I'm at with it. I just, again, I love to move, I love to moan. I love a good misery, but I can't really understand how anything in this is anything but really it's, positive. It's the classic Twitter thing though. It's like, it's so much, you, there's so much more motivation for someone to go and moan about something than there is to be positive about it because you, it's like a much more stronger emotion that people like, oh, I've got to slam my keyboard about this. But um Ah, I think it's good. I think I'm happy. I think let's move on to the next paragraph. Through our latest product experience, Doodles is breaking new ground for what it means to be a Web3 brand where opportunity and IP are unlocked and expanded for our community. We want our holders to be able to express themselves and the Doodle in multiple places. To this end, we're excited to share on January the 31st, the first step in the Doodles 2 product experience will launch. We're holding our multi-chain journey by rewarding Doodle holders and activating the duplicate. Yeah. This is where I'm. Gonna, this is where my FOMO is going to go and really kick in, because I don't have a duplicator 
it's one of those things where, again, tiny violin. Oh, I've only got to do, but I do get what you're saying. And uh, I, as I said, chose to keep one on the basis that I shouldn't be useful at some point. Pleased that I did. Um, I think it's nice that they've got really clear that we are beginning our motor chain journey by rewarding doodles holders. Whatever that yeah. means. I yeah, don't know. Well, so hopefully I'll get that first bit of the reward. Hopefully it's just dude coin and it's like fucking <laughs> ape coin yeah. V2. I mean, it'd be great. Like if I could $50, earn $10,000 a day or something off, off, off. I mean, Only 10, aren't 50. Yeah. Um, but again, <laughs> it's just another reiteration of we are going to not, ab- we're not abandoning you as the OG collection. Mm-hmm. We're not just sacking you off because we've got bigger and better things to do. Um, Again, it's a, it's a lot later than they said it would be um, with the duplicates and stuff like that because it's summer 22. Yeah. Things take time. I'd rather they touch wood, this goes really well. I'd rather this was a successful launch and it went really smoothly than they'd done it in the summer, rushed it and got it wrong. Um, I personally think the entitlement in the NFT market has receded hugely yeah. as the enjoyment of making basically free money has gone as well. Mm-hmm. And so I'm hoping that the majority of people are okay with the fact it's been six, seven, eight months late, whatever it is, and that we get something cool they do it right January that's 30th. the main thing isn't it getting it right that is key yeah not doing it twice get it right first mm-hmm. time um duplication is the first step of the doodles 2 product journey and there'll be several videos illustrations released in the coming days of what to expect nice. uh, but to summarize the duplicator will mint the first doodles 2 wearables the next step will kick off about a month later when the genesis box opens and mints the second set of doodles 2 wearables so just to reiterate right there we've got the first set of wearables via the uh, duplicator as of the um, 31st of January. Yeah. About a month later, we get the Genesis box opening, which is obviously the box we got in New York, and that will yeah. release the second selection so of wearables. I do have that one. I'm excited about yeah. that. I've got the Genesis box. We um, we had to do some negotiating because I wasn't a doodles holder then. Yeah, I but, had to. Um, yeah, that's not but we did about some why, negotiating, yeah. and I was able to mint the uh, the Genesis box. And let's think about what this means. So, duplicator sounds like it's something that you can use to duplicate existing traits off your normal doodle and and sell them on the market. For example, great for you, Wizzy hat, Wizard. really, yeah. really, really sought after uh, trait. Um, for me, I've got a bag and I smile like um, green hair. Oh, maybe the flame background. I don't know. I've got some cool traits. I changed but... my wizard's mouth 100% though. This is one of the things yeah. I'm preemptively thinking about because I've got the corn in the mouth. Obviously, he's never using the animation. It's just, yeah. you know, um, so that's but pretty the Genesis, cool. What I was going to say, the Genesis box is, I think, where the new traits are going to be coming from. So I think it's almost more, more yeah. in my Genesis, opinion, yeah. more exciting to have the Genesis box. Because you've seen, as Burnt Toast said himself the other day, that um, the some of the traits, he's been things that he's been working on, I think he was talking about the traits for for Doodles, I think he said are some of the best art he's done. And from the, the sort of sneak peeks that we've seen, I think he's probably right because some of them look awesome. It'll be interesting as well for people who use their Doodle as an identity properly. So, yeah. for example, us on the podcast, mm-hmm. um, someone who uses it and has a big presence on social media, whether they choose to actually change stuff just because of the implications that could have. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see that. I wonder how that work, will work with the Twitter blue kind of hexagon thing and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And the other big thing is, like, does it change the actual original profile picture art on your yeah. original NFT? So, there's loads of little bits and bobs. I assume it won't, yeah. but yeah. it'll be yeah. interesting to see. Uh, each set of wearables unlocked during this time will include a Doodles 2 beta pass for future use. At this stage, collectors will have everything they need for early access to private beta. Uh, the first iteration of our create your own doodle tool. Access to private beta and this new tool will only be unlocked via the beta pass. So in summary, you need to be involved in either of these two drops and unlockables to have that beta pass to actually use them. It's going to be um, interesting. I don't know. Interesting to see how the market values these beta passes, and I guess they're going to be NFTs. So that's what I was about to ask you. I wonder if they'll be sellable or whether it's like yeah, locked. I assume I they'll be they're... sellable. Yeah. If you have yeah, five, well, if you have be. five of either be. item. Or even exactly, just one yeah. of each. You don't yeah. maybe, I don't know. I um, we'd like to thank everyone for their continued support on Doodles 2. We have a lot more to share regarding the platform in the coming weeks, including plans for several native integrations across social media platforms, major brands, collaborations, gaming environments, live events, retail, streaming content, and beyond. We're also planning permanent, semi-permanent live activations in places where our communities live. Nothing in the UK, probably. Brilliant. Thanks, mate. Uh, <laughs> now you can grow with us. Well, we can't. Let's go to America. Create with us, explore, and just have fun. It all starts with doodles. Sincerely, Burnt Toast, Julep, Poopy, and Julian. Now, that's really cool. Um, do you Sam think there's going to be a doodle shop in Miami or something like that? Do you think, that, or do you think that's no, what it's going to be? No. Do you know I think it'll be? I think that it will be... No. We, we chatted, obviously, to them about New York. I thought it was a bit too stuffy. Uh, I think Miami and LA. Yeah. They loved Austin, though. Basically, mm-hmm. whatever it is, none of it's coming to England. No, doodle shop maybe. Maybe they'll like make um, the doodle putt or something a permanent. What thing I was going to say like is that I I imagine 
then what they'll do is make sure two things they'll pick one or two permanent locations that have shop and also an experience yeah which perhaps uses uh, a holder sorry of uh, that is it. That's just you can get, it, it, you can get it for free, but the general public have to we pay can a five or walk something. in. Yeah. But then doodle part x amount to go and play. Yeah. And instead, you can win. Perhaps you can win uh, items that be used on your yeah, doodle wearables, doodle doodles. Things like yep. that. Yeah. Just to keep on feeding the public little nibbles of doodles, right? So it'll be that and then that, and then what they'll do can is we call equivalent doodles to toodles. Toodles, to I don't know. I don't know how people feel about that. Toodles is actually a character in uh, Mickey Mouse's Clubhouse, which uh, oh, when yeah. the kid come in, you'll find all about. Hey, Toodles! <laughs> hey, Toodles! Anyway, so uh, yeah, so that's the other thing. And then obviously what they do is crazy cool pop- pop-ups, right? So they'll do yeah. the equivalent of Doodles, Doodle Putt um, somewhere, pop-up shop, and they'll make it public. I assume they'll push out advertising then, blah, 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 blah. But I'm interested in here as well is uh, first mention of gaming environments. I don't See, really know what now, that's going to mean. This excites me a bit because I like games, but um, you... not that getting time to play them anymore. But um, Little violin yeah. again. Fuck it, no, I'm playing a lot of violin today <laughs> for you, man. This is, we've got to do the violin collection. But, but yeah, no, exciting. Um, I, I wonder which way they're going to go with that. And I think... My... Like especially with uh, board apes having their big sort of dookie dash thing kind of out at the moment, oh, I think maybe shit. I know, yeah, games to win wearables and stuff like that might be fun. Well, either way, there's two th- thoughts that come to mind. Um, that was obviously the end of their their letter to the community. First one is like long term goal. Surely they'd want to a skin in Fortnite, like of the Doodle mascot, <laughs> something like that. Think of a more relevant game they could put it in. Yeah. Appeals to so many teenagers, kids, and stuff like that who are going to be in that wider sphere. Bang. Second thing is, do you remember when we had Artie on the podcast, we did the explainer, sorry, for them? Yeah. And um, obviously their whole point was that it was play to, well, play to win. It was play to, to play earn to earn. NFTs. Play to earn NFTs. But play Rather to win not just NFTs. play to earn. It was play to win NFTs. That was their point. Well, so yeah, it was like you're same playing same. and then yeah. you, well, well, uh, no, not according to Artie, it's not. Oh, okay. um, you play to win. And so essentially you, you are encouraged to participate in order to upgrade yeah. your NFTs, blah, blah, blah. Really cool model. So I wonder if they go down nice. something like that. But yeah, overall, um, I think it's super positive. Um, people get emotional about it. I've got to get, I'm going to get a whizzy hat. Like and on and I'm yeah, like, oh, who's the whizzy now, bitch? Right? Well, yeah, okay. You do you. Um, but yeah, I, I'm really <laughs> generally encouraged. I think ultimately, if you are looking for a brand that is going to at least really try not to just be here for five minutes, there are definitely other options by all means, 100%. Um, I just think Doodle's are a good option. Um, but it all depends what you want to get out of it because obviously ultimately it goes without saying when people bought Doodles a year ago, a large percentage, including myself, made good money off of knowing that the one ETH mint was going to be, uh, pardon me, sorry, the 0.123 mint was going to be a lot more very soon. Now that yeah. we're at this point where I think for most collections, if they've survived, the floor price might go up and down a bit, but a lot of people are just sitting. Like you and I, Doodles are just there. Just, that's it. That's my doodle. Yeah. So this is something which is much better than a lot of other collections do. Uh, they're giving it a go. They're going to fucking yeah. go. They're going for it. You know? I think I like it's going it. to be exciting in a few weeks. Like, especially this yeah. is where all the information is going to start coming out. It's a shame that we didn't get um, animated doodles news through a little bit quicker. Now our, our new proposal is going in to sort of start around the beginning of March because this would have been some really, really cool stuff to content. And that's why we've designated this episode to talking about it because as you probably, as anyone listening probably knows about us, we just fucking love doodles and we want to talk about it. Um, and uh, it's been cool to go through this, chat it up and um, get excited about what's coming up. The, the good news for us, to be fair, just to, kind of before we do wrap up, is uh, it does show how community-led news of any variety, TGID guys, TGID guys are a great example of this. Um, people are going to need those bulletins they're going to need those little updates yeah. and ultimately having a really quick and easy animated show that runs alcongside all the brilliant stuff the team do but is community yeah. led I think yeah. it should be funded really guys to be honest I think mate. it's going to be good I, to be honest I like the fact that it didn't get funded because it's made me we go back to re- drawing board and I've got, we've got some really really cool ways that we're, we've changed the idea we're going to develop it we can really focus in on the core element of what the original idea was which was which was the Doodles News show and Doodles News I'm um I'm excited to get it out. Yep, I'm down, bro. But yeah, like I said, it's been an absolute pleasure to be joined by Jimmy T as always for the Right Click Say podcast. If you haven't already, uh, you'd be very disappointing. But you should like this video, 
comment below what we should chat about next and of course subscribe to the biggest and of course only animated podcast in web3 uh, we'll see you very soon not animated at the moment because uh, Jimmy's lazy, <sighs> lazy boy. Uh, but yeah, we've got loads more videos coming out. We're going to be recording regularly with the Wangmeister General Andrew Wang. We'll be back on on Wednesday yeah. next week. Um, we're going to be chatting about all things NFTs, probably not just the football. Uh, and loads of other episodes coming out, which is going to be exciting. And hopefully, a lot of Jimmy's work is going to be appearing across a certain large chain's NFT NYC booths. More on that later. Uh, we've been the Right Click Say Podcast. I've been your host, Calcio, doing the longest outro ever. I'm just kind of fucking enjoying the sound <laughs> of my voice right now. Uh, yeah, have a good day. See you later. Sign out. Sign out. Ciao. Bye.